You guys should all know by now that the Daily Wire hosts are all a collection of failed actors who've just kind of failed forward into a position as right-wing media demagogues. Ben Shapiro is a failed writer. Matt Walsh is a failed uh, radio host. Uh, Michael Knowles a failed actor. Uh, who else? Uh, Brett Cooper is a failed actress. Uh, they are literally all failed actors. As a matter of fact, they are now working to bring in other failed actors for their projects, such as... Um, Gina Carano, they made a, after she got fired from The Mandalorian and working at Disney, they uh, brought her in for a Western movie they made that was supposed to be like an anti-woke classic Western, but it was starring a woman, so their own audience saw it as woke and bad, and uh, its uh, screening ended up making $800 on opening day. They sold $800 in tickets. And that's with them selling tickets to people who worked on it to go to the movie premiere. So, like, yeah, it really failed. But they are not giving up on their effort to make movies. They are currently working on a Snow White remake that is going to feature Brett Cooper as Snow White. It's called Snow White and the Evil Queen. And uh, apparently uh, Michael Knowles has done a video talking about it. Now, Michael Knowles, who you see pictured here on a uh, normal Friday night for him... Uh, is, of course, a failed actor, and I don't know if he's going to have a role in the movie or anything, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if he ends up having a role. I imagine he'll mention it uh, in this video that we're about to watch. Also, something worth noting is Michael Knowles, or yeah, Michael Knowles has 1.7 million subscribers, but his his current viewer count as of late is uh, it's a little... Uh, it's not looking too good, huh? Four days ago, he managed to pull 416k views. Besides that, I mean... The only one of these people who's doing well right now and actually growing instead of slowly falling off is Brett Cooper. At this point, it's they're so desperate that they're even clickbaiting Brett Cooper for the rest of their channels and projects. Such as this video Michael Knowles made. We've launched our kids' entertainment app because we got tired of accusing the left of indoctrinating kids, so we started doing it ourselves. It's like that Thanos meme when the left still isn't indoctrinating kids like you've been saying for all these years, and it's Thanos putting on the glove saying, Fine, I'll do it myself. Really great news while I was away. I ended, I was supposed to be away for a lot of this week. There were some snafus on my international travel, which we maybe we'll get to in a little bit. Maybe I'll tell you in a few weeks. Oh, did you guys see that they also made a Bluey ripoff show? They made a new show that's like uh, an animated show that's like hardcore ripping off the art style of Bluey, the Australian kids show. I, I don't I don't see the appeal to it as an adult. I know that like a lot of adults watch it and maybe it's like one of those cartoons that has a lot of value to adults or whatever. I, I get it, you know. Um, I, I'm not going to judge it by its surface level stuff. I saw a clip of it once that was really good. I saw a clip of Bluey on YouTube shorts that I did like though. It was about ADHD where like the kid's in the back seat kicking his legs in the car and it like annoys the dad and the dad says, can you stop that? And like five seconds later, the kid starts doing it again because he forgot. And I was like, holy shit, I have that interaction with my mom now where my I'm bouncing my leg right now. If you see me shaking, it's because I have a constant leg bounce because I have ADHD and it's just I have, my leg needs to bounce all the time. And I do it in the car and it bounces the car because, you know, I'm bouncing my leg and it really bounces the car and my mom's like every five minutes like stop bouncing your leg and the entire time I'm ever riding in a car or any vehicle I am actively having to keep myself from bouncing my right leg because it wants to bounce so bad and it's completely unconsciously the second my mind drifts away from actively keeping myself from doing it and I forget to, to keep myself from doing it I start doing it because it's a passive thing and I have to actively try not to do it so yeah that um that clip I saw from Bluey was pretty nice. I liked that. That was good. That was cool. Uh, but anyway, I'm back here. That's the bright side. I get to speak with all of you in the member segmentum. Uh, but the one day that I missed was the announcement. Wait, wait, did, did he go to Israel? I'm guessing like the Daily Wire hosts went to Israel or something. Because the stuff happening or whatever. Is that what he's saying? I didn't hear what he said, but... 
I I heard him say something that sounded like it was in um, what's the language Hebrew? That would be that would be like in the Daily Wire's uh you know sort of thing. Oh, by the way, one of the best examples of how you know that uh, Brett Cooper is streaming and up or not streaming but uploading from a set made to look like a bedroom she lives in, so she kind of comes off as just a YouTuber, is that all the Daily Wire hosts have their own custom set because they're like they they are in an office building and it's like. They, they literally have offices so like michael Knowles's set is like this classical like architecture hers is a bedroom that's meant to look like she lives in it uh ben shapiro's is more of like a a like news desk um matt walsh does more of a news desk thing too like they 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 kind of all go for their own different style she uses second camera shots as well it's very obvious she's in a studio if you know anything about production stuff but like her audience doesn't. Her her audience falls for it hook, line, and sinker. Announcement of Bent Key, which is the Daily Wire kids entertainment offering. And I was, I was following it. You know, I'm kind of checking my phone. I sent out some tweets. I've known about this project, obviously, for years at this point. This is a project years in the making. And then I checked out The Little Sizzle. Hi, you made it. Oh, hello. Wanna play? Uh, uh. I've seen enough. Uh, yeah, this is this is the the Bluey knockoff show they're making. Let's do it right. Ready or not, here we go. Please keep your arms and legs inside the cart at all times. <laughs> Hurry up, the party is starting soon. Yeah. Follow me. The sad thing is, this will probably be effective. Like, if Coco Melon is something that could exist and be effective, this will. The thing is, the most effective thing they could possibly do is to pull a Coco Melon and to upload this all on a second channel as a kid's channel and just have it blow up for free on kids YouTube and have kids be watching it in mass. But the thing is you can't advertise on kids content on YouTube. So it's not a profitable revenue source. So they made this a subscription service. You have to subscribe to their service to access this shit because that's how they make their money. They need to make a return on their investment and just posting it on YouTube. Kids content doesn't make money back. Can't run ads on it. Well, YouTube runs ads on it, but they don't give you the money for it. Where's he going? We're going on a treasure hunt. We're exploring the wild uh -huh. blue yonder. It's chilla time. God, these shows are going to be awful. You, you know it. Unbelievable. Whether big or little, little or big, oh. we all have fabulous adventures together. Wow. It's time to head off for adventure. Look around you. Oh, it is a bit of news. Grand Solo. <laughs> Imagine this. All I see is adventure. I'm not a super sense. Like, genuinely, just we're going to do the, like, conservative kids app. Like, could you imagine if there was a lefty, progressive kids app? How much they'd go off on that? They already claim there is. They claim that, like, every app that exists that's, like, a streaming service is woke or whatever. Like, if you claim everything is woke, then you can just kind of make up your own they've gone too far this time examples, I guess. Um, but could you imagine how hard they would they've gone too far this time if the left made a left equivalent? If some left-wing institution made an equivalent to that? It's called the PBS Kids app. Yeah, it's called literally any, like, mainstream educational services yeah that is true you know like the, literally scishow one of my favorite scishow videos is the one that is just titled science proves sex is not a binary well, let me see if i can find it scishow biological sex i love this video i show it on stream a lot so i'm sorry to people who've like seen me show it a million times already <laughs> but it's just so good SciShow is, um, I believe, part of PBS, right? Like, they, they are, like, like Hank Green works for PBS, and I'm pretty sure SciShow is part of it. Like, they have you literally... I, I watched SciShow videos as part of assignments in school. Like, our teachers literally said, watch these SciShow videos, and then, like, to prepare for the quiz we're going to have today. It's like, okay. Um, so, yeah, that that is how legit this dude is. And also, when you look at the... Um, if you guys just want me to, like, send you the link, I can, but the description of this video is an amazing source for, like, pro-trans science stuff. 
He literally has an entire sources section that's like a laundry list, as long as your arm, of links to science articles and whatnot, and uh, institutions that back up what he's saying in this video. Like, he very, very, very efficiently and uh, thoroughly cites his sources. He even has image sources for every picture he uses. I'll play a little bit of it, even though it's copyrighted, just because I want to give you an idea of, like, th this is the lefty equivalent to what they're making, and it's just called actual educational content. In high school biology, we usually learn that the sexes in humans are fixed and concrete. Whether you're male or female is black and white and rooted in your DNA. Your 23rd pair of chromosomes is either two X chromosomes or an X and a Y. That's it. End of story. And that's essentially what scientists thought, too. But it turns out that sex isn't that straightforward. In fact, biologists today are saying sex is a spectrum. And the scientific community is still working on understanding and respecting the people who fall in the middle of that spectrum. To get this out of the way right up front, we're not talking about gender or sexuality here. Gender refers to social and cultural attributes and understandings of men and women and their roles, though not every culture has only two categories and it's increasingly seen as a spectrum. Plus, the gender you identify as may or may not be the same one as what you express with things like your clothing and behavior, all of which can also be on a spectrum. Sexuality describes who you are attracted to, and it can be equally- So basically he goes on being based and explaining all the very basic stuff with like sex and like being a bimodal distribution and not a binary, sex and gender not being the same thing, all that good stuff. He even explains um, how many people who are intersex or have DSDs, differences in sexual development, like that the total population of those people in the world, if you put them all in one country, would be in the top 10 most populated countries in the world. People who are intersex are more common than redheads, natural redheads. So like, he, he breaks down everything very well. But yeah, like actual educational content, I guess would be the left wing equivalent to like the right wing propaganda dribble they're making. Sentimental guy, okay? But I'm not gonna say that when I saw the sizzle, tears came to my eyes because I'm a man, okay? I'm a manly man and I don't do that kind of thing. But I already had very high expectations for, for Bent Key, for the kids offering. Jeremy had promised to invest, I think it was $100 million <laughs> over the course of a, a few years. Yeah, that, the guy who runs Daily Wire is called Jeremy Boring. He's a failed uh, filmmaker. And he's the guy who's like heading the uh, the entertainment sector of Daily Wire, where they're trying to like, they, they're trying, because like, they're all failed from the entertainment industry. So they fell back to conservative propaganda. Now they've made bank off of that. And their goal is to try to get into the entertainment industry again, using the popularity from their, um, uh, uh, and, and the money from doing politics grift. Years. Uh, he did that about 18 months or so ago. And everyone kept asking, where's, where's the kids' entertainment? Where's the kids' entertainment? And he, not only did he make good on it, it is, it is like five times, five to 10 times better, even than I expected it to be. And I had high expectations. We've got four original kids' series, a bunch of other kids' series from around the world that we've acquired for this platform that are just good Oh, that's how they're going to try to bring people in, is they've acquired the rights to stream a bunch of kids' shows that aren't made by them. Ah. So I imagine they'll have, like, VeggieTales on there or some shit. So it's not just going to be their original productions. They're also going to have a bunch of, like, they have the rights to stream these kids' shows in the States. Which might mean they have exclusive rights. Like, you know how you have to use a VPN to watch certain shows on Netflix because they don't have it in your country? They, they might, that's really bad. Like, there might be people who are like, fuck it, I'll get Bent Key just so I can watch this show or so my kids can watch this show because they can't in America anywhere else but this. And they have the money to buy exclusive rights to these kids' shows. Content for your kids. Not crazy woke stuff, not going to convince them that reality is upside down, not overly didactic and on the nose, and just good, fun kids' content that is going to help shape their minds in the right way and is going to entertain them. The right I, I've way. I'm playing it for my kids. It's just, it's just amazing. And if you are already a Daily Wire annual member, then there's some great news. You've already got full access to all of Bent Key's incredible shows at no expense. Isn't it insane that these people pretend like they're the victims of the culture war, and meanwhile they've got, like, streaming services and o custom office setups and shit? Like, like, I gotta keep it down or I'll, like, bother my neighbors. 
Because <laughs> I'm streaming in my bedroom from, like, my computer setup that if it, like, if my computer bursts into flames right now, it's Jover, dude. If I can't raise money to replace it and fast from my audience, it's literally Jover. Like, it's, it's done. Like, there's no, there's no production team or insurance or company that's, like, managing shit. I don't even have a Twitter account to let people know what happened. Most of my audience would be clueless as to why my stream just, like, suddenly disappeared and I can't upload anymore. Um, like, it, it would be catastrophic for me. Like, it, it is insane that these people play the victim in this whole thing from their literal ivory towers. It's really shameless. I'm going to skip through the sponsorship because I genuinely don't care. Which is important. Not, not even the sponsorship. Their own, like grifting their own like self-promotion and we do it i'm doing it right now but also to make culture and politics that was the point it's amazing to see it happen uh, so anyway go over there right now and subscribe if you haven't already right now go to roughgreens.com <laughs> slash we, we go from gr from literally self-shilling straight into a sponsorship holy f dude like we had to skip over moments of the video being self-shilling for the app and then we now we have to skip over an ad how much of the video is the ad there we go. Okay, so all the way at two-thirds of the way into the video, we're finally through the ads and the self-promotion. We, we've finally gotten through the shameless self-promotion and ads. They couldn't even stretch it to 10 minutes for the extra ad. Re well, actually, no. They reduced it to eight minutes now instead of 10 minutes to get the uh, mid-roll ads. So they did get it to the minimum allotted time needed for uh, uh, maximum mid-roll ads. Our kids offering of Bent Key is it's not just it's looks obviously primarily missionally driven but the business side here is that there's a huge marketing opportunity disney i love how like because the right doesn't actually like they don't they don't present themselves as if they care about anything so the idea of just like talking about how what they do is just a business openly is, is completely like allowed like when i talk about the fact that this is my job my audience is pretty cool. I've, I've, sh I've like, trimmed a lot of the cringe out of my audience, so typically there's not a lot of cringe in it. But, like, there are still people who get iffy about the fact that I make money doing this. Even though it's, like, just enough to live, just enough to get by, I still get, I, I still get shit for it. No one gives you shit for it. I get shit for it. You know what I got a lot of shit for was when I celebrated that YouTube was cracking down on ad blockers because it would, have, it would result in me being able to make more money and a lot of smaller content creators being able to make more money. The big YouTubers that were like anti the ad block crackdown are anti the ad block crackdown because they can afford it. They like it it doesn't hurt their wallet too badly if um that small percentage they may, they would have made from uh blocked ads isn't made by them but they get to virtue signal that they're against something that's unpopular with the audience that that watches them. But for co smaller content creators, even a 5%, a 2% increase in ad revenue would be astronomical, dude. Holy sh**. Really? They just want you to entertain them for free? Yeah, the most common argument is that without ad block, YouTube is unwatchable because of how many ads there are. And that is true. I watch YouTube occasionally with YouTube uh, or with uh, Discord watch together where you can't like log in and use YouTube premium and ad block doesn't work. Um, and it is really sh**. It sucks. Granted, a lot of the suckiness is from trying to coordinate, like, the, the synchronization with multiple people. And so, like, everybody gets their own ad. Some of them are skippable. Some are different lengths. And every time someone finishes their ad, it rewinds to the start of the ad. So, like, you're watching a video with five people. Everyone gets their ad. You skip your ad, and the video starts playing. And then someone skips theirs, and it rewinds back to when the ad started playing for the video. And it does the same for every person as they finish their ad. And you have to pause it and wait for everyone to finish their ad to continue. That's annoying as fuck. That is really annoying, and I hate it. But if you're just watching YouTube normally... Like, getting mad at a YouTuber, a smaller YouTuber who's celebrating a fractional increase in their income due to YouTube cracking down on, on like, ad blocks, something they can't control. Like, like their th that YouTuber's opinion doesn't change anything, but I still got shit for it. Yeah, no, there's, there's a lot of disdain, even among lefty audiences, for the content creators they watch making money. Look at what happened with the Hassan drama. Like, as much as I don't like Hassan, I think the house stuff was ridiculous. Like, the guy may be a lazy asshole but he managed to make that money from people voluntarily donating to him and ad revenue um and even if he was stealing content that was still people voluntarily giving them his money or giving him their money 
And like, I don't fault him for buying nice things like a nice house with it, especially when he shares this family. You know, like, I think it's reasonable to spend a lot of money on a house like that if your mom lives in it with you, right? Like, I think his mom and I think maybe brothers live in the house with them. I'm not sure. So I don't really give, I don't fault him for that. Like, I think his drip is pretty cringe. Like, it's pretty clear he spends money to show off with his clothes that he has money. Um, and he does like to flex. That's the cringe shit. But having money is not bad. I, I like to critique him for his, um, yeah, his shit takes, his horrible uh, foreign policy. I think people give Hassan way too much credit for his domestic policy takes. Like, having decent takes on domestic policy is something that most celebrities are able to do. But, like, Hassan's takes on foreign policy are downright demonic. The pro-China, pro-Russia, like, pro-Hamas stuff. Like, he, he is a Hamas sympathizer, too. Yeah, Dylan's literally peak foreign policy lefty talk. Like, foreign policy is complicated. I do my best to talk about it, but it's really hard to be informed enough to talk about it responsibly. Um, or at least to talk about it well enough that you don't make yourself look dumb. And so, like... I, I like if you want like the top tier foreign policy takes don't go to me go to someone like dylan because that is his wheelhouse that is his department he's not pro hamas nah he, he was doing apologetics for it he you could see it you could see in the interactions between him and ethan klein when the uh, pro hamas protesters were were defending hamas and like chanting for like hamas to kill more israelis um, and like ethan was saying this shit's horrible this shit's horrible hassan was like e and well, I mean, eh. and Ethan's like, you think that that's horrible, right? And Hassan's like, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to press me on it. Like, why are you acting? Why are you being so aggressive about it? Why are you acting like I'd say it's not like, uh, yeah, of course it is. Yeah. After like stuttering to be able to give a straight answer for like a minute straight on whether or not these protesters are bad for supporting Hamas. No, minimum volts. You can 100% lump Hassan in with them. I think Hassan is literally, like, a, a, a scum-sucking piece of shit. And I think less of anybody who watches his content. I literally do. That is my take. I think less of you if you watch Hassan. Yeah, all the other woke companies, they flip the middle finger to their audience. Okay, you say you don't want your audience's eyeballs, then we're going to take your audience's eyeballs, and we're going to give them something. You want to talk about a big marketing opportunity for conservatives broadly. There's a new poll out from AP and ORC which says that 78% uh, of Americans believe the country is trending in the wrong direction. Only 21%, just a little over one in five Americans, say the U.S. is headed in the right direction. This is a downturn even from a month ago when the... What, what, wait, what is this question? Okay, so a poll as vague as, I th do you think the country is going in the wrong direction? At every point in American history would get a majority of people saying yes. Because everybody is fixated on the side they don't like winning or losing. If you're a lefty right now, you feel like the country is going in the wrong direction because of a fascist takeover. If you're a right winger right now, you feel like the country is going in the wrong direction because Biden and like wokeness. So like, yeah, most Americans think the country is going in the wrong direction. This is a useless statistic, literally useless to prove anything. That same group found that three quarters of Americans felt the country was heading in the wrong direction and a quarter believed it was heading in the right direction. So you went from one in four Americans saying the country's going in the right direction down to one in five Americans and, and you're just in free fall, okay? This is a great opportunity for any Republican who says that he's running for president right now or any Republican who wants to be Speaker of the House. That battle's going on right the second too. Yeah, well, right now, most Americans are not pro-Republican. That's what the, the statistics that actually track data that's more specific on what party are people going to vote for in the election show the vast majority are likely to vote democrat ronald reagan had a great line in a time for choosing which is maybe his most famous speech where he said they accuse us of having simple answers to complex problems maybe there are simple answers not easy answers but simple they are they are simple what do we want in this country we want strong families strong communities safe communities, law and order. We want to be able to flourish. We want to be able to prosper. We want to, we want more good and less evil, which means we want to worship our God. We don't want our churches to be closed. We want to raise our kids in the right way. We, we don't want weirdo teachers in crazy schools filling their heads with a pack of lies. We don't, really simple. We want to have borders. We want to have law and order. We want there to be a distinction between citizens and foreigners. We want to have I imagine you know what the translation is to each of these things, right? Like the, the, the euphemisms. 
like we want to have borders is we want to lock down the borders and and keep kids in cages on the border and like shoot people trying to get in build the wall that kind of thing the whole like we don't want crazy teachers putting things in their heads in crazy schools as they want to keep doing the uh the book bans like they do in florida and like banning of classes like you guys know that it like b advanced biology like the the class that you would take in high school for college credit advanced biology is banned in florida you cannot take it it has been eliminated as an option to get college credits for in the state of florida in public schools it has been banned because in advanced biology or sorry ap psychology not advanced biology sorry ap psych i apologize ap bio is still allowed ap psych teaches that gender and sex aren't the same thing so they banned AP Psychology. You cannot get those college credits in high school for AP Psychology anymore. I knew several people who took AP Psychology in high school when I was in high school. Those people would not be allowed to take it if we were in school today. The reason for this is because of what it teaches, is the current scientific consensus on what gender is, which is not the same thing as sex and a identity thing. It also teaches about gender dysphoria and the validity of trans people because that is the scientific consensus and so that is what's in the curriculum. Uh, and because the Republicans banned the teaching of that, they said, here's the thing. You can still teach AP psychology if you exclude anything that we disagree with politically with the list including like the gender stuff, right? The thing is though, the completion of the class cannot be accepted as valid and for credit without that information being included in the curriculum. So the Republicans have suggested an impossible standard to be met for the class to be offered, because if the class is offered by their standard, the class won't count for any credit because it's literally an incomplete class. It might as well be an after school activity you're going to. You're not following a curriculum mandated by like state educate or uh, by uh, 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 national education standards. So, like, they're, they're literally actively fighting to destroy, like, Republican states' kids' educations for political wins, and they're championing it. I love how smug this guy's face is, too. What a, what a good frame to end it on, dude. What a perfect frame.